of chimpanzees. I was a monkey. I will say this. Even though it's never the same, always sounds same, we always look different, there's always like some editing tweaks that have to happen. This feels like coming home, this AK. This feels like, I know I've missed you in our little ADHD I know. Time. Just the two of us. Just the two of us can make but, it if we try. Um, what? One of the beautiful parts of ADHD is that sometimes, is. even though I've experienced something before, experiencing it again feels like the first time. It really does feel like the first time. Yeah, it really does sometimes. Yeah. Watching movies again. And you love watching movies over and over. And I don't. But when I watch a movie and Lindsay's like, no, we saw that one. I'm like, I don't know that I did. You must have watched it without me. And then I just can't. I can't remember. And then there'll be one tiny thing right at the very <laughs> ending, and the and climax. Like, I'm like, I know right, that. I have seen this. <laughs> more times than i am comfortable and then and then you you get into like an existential crisis of like do i say anything because we've gone the whole movie and i, I just caught on in the last 15 minutes or do i, I just play dumb and be like that was a really good first time i've ever viewed that fine cinematic feature yeah um, i know but yeah so that made me want to go back to the beginning of adhd 20 i bet i would learn some things all over again <laughs> We would probably relearn some things. We well, some you're kind of in luck because the, the topic that I wanted to speak about today is definitely a readdressing yes. of of topics that we have gone through in the past. So maybe this is the beginning of, of that journey for you. <laughs> of that journey. I love this journey for both of us. Uh, let's mm -hmm. do the one thing that we have consistently been able to remember every single show we never, yes. since we imparted an episode uh -huh. with our sweet friend Tay, uh -huh. who we got to hang out with over the weekend to yeah. film the finale of The Adventures of Bud and Herb Season 1. Plug <laughs> for our Besties forthcoming podcast. I'm going to go ahead and say this publicly right now. Anna Fitzgerald is the number one fan of ADHD 20. I, Allison Lee Kendrick, am the number one fan of The Adventures of Bud and Herb. There it is. You will not unseat me. Not unseat You bits. will not unseat me. Roll me that beautiful, what dice you're rolling with <laughs> today, sir? What you got there? What today? Got? Today I've actually got quite a few options. Today I'm going to use my wooden dice. Oh, I love those. And I'm going to use my dragon scale day you're you're mixing i've never a mix and match i've never done that oh. before I oh always, that is dangerous yeah i, Can I, go, I shouldn't do that should i oh, i think i love the energy i'm gonna start inspiring okay. me to like right. okay. mismatch sets what'd you get <laughs> i got a 67. okay i love how the universe is always, always, always listening to us getting woo woo early today. We just had a conversation about like, how did people not know earlier in our lives? And today's question is, what's your biggest ADHD aha moment? In life? Uh, yeah. Ooh. The biggest one. Yeah, the biggest one. I mean, that this podcast has made that so easy, but I really think that the... Okay, a little bit of clarification. So by, by aha, we mean... Oh my gosh. ADHD I didn't realize. ADHD explains that. I, I think it's masking okay. for me. Is there like a specific, because it's saying the biggest ah. aha moment. Like, is there a moment that you can think of? We've both lived a lot of moments where like, you were like, oh my God, and that's masking. Or now that you look back, you're like, in that moment, I was masking hardcore and I wasn't okay. even aware of it. Okay. Well, I guess then I should step back and say, I have told the story before, but my aha moment, the moment where I was like, Oh, no, was when I was reading ADHD colon a hunter in a farmer's world by Tom Hartman. Oh, I don't know this. One. And I was I 
my roommate had ADHD and this was on our joint book shelf and I just picked it up, started going through it and started freaking out. What? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think I, you know, I say this a lot, but I, I, I very specifically remember literally dropping the book mm. in sh in shock and, and knew, knew that my life was changed forever. How about you? I know that I've shared the ones before about like finally figuring out how to tether my inability to do certain tasks by myself to mm. ADHD from like, I need someone to come over and like, just sit on my couch and watch my TV while I clean the house. That's a good one. You know, my inability to like, walk into a restaurant alone. My friends have to text me. Those are all big, just glass shattering. But I think for me, the biggest aha moment around ADHD has definitely been around the conversations we've had about rejection, sensitive dysphoria mm -hmm. and learning yeah. Because this is something like I was a highly sensitive child. I was always labeled melodramatic, overdramatic, dramatic. Like, and and I remember like friends in high school and beyond. Like, why are, why are you so sensitive? Why yeah. is this, you know? Can't you just be a duck and let the water roll off your back? And so learning that this is that RSD first of all is a real thing, and I'm genetically predispositioned for it. With my ADHD was definitely my biggest like. It's not, yeah. you know, there's nothing wrong with me. This is just the neural pathways that information takes around my brain. I think yes. that's so big and beautiful. Yes. We at ADHD 20, which by the way, is a podcast that finds the intersection between ADHD and TCRPGs. Yes. We believe ADHD in many ways is a disability. We believe this and we try to speak that truth. Uh, we do not feel that anyone should abuse this thing. So it's one thing to say, my brain works this way. It's another thing to hide behind. Yep. My brain works this way. Yes. And I, it is oftentimes a very fine line, but I did just kind of want to say that because it does somewhat fit into the topic of today, but I think it fits into our personal voyages. Our fantastic voyages, if you will. Our fantastic voyages that we, that we want to understand and appreciate and f use that understanding for forgiveness, but mostly for ourselves, not to ask other people to well, I can't do that. that ADHD is, uh, leave me alone and I'm not going to do what you want me to do. Go to hell. That. Pat, it, uh, we've talked about this. Can you not do your impressions of me on the episode? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. It's just an old habit. Style uh, anyway. So I love that. I love aha moments. Yeah. And those are good ones. So we had a question chosen at random from a table of 100 talking about our favorite mm -hmm. ADHD moments. Yes. Leading into a topic of an aha moment that you have both had Recently and had. continue to have. God, that's a good segue. Wow. Masterful. Masterful. Yes. I have recently had an aha moment. It's not like I have not been aware. That's what's so interesting about aha moments sometimes to me. There's always a part of me that knows, right? <laughs> There's always a part of me deep down that it's like, mm-hmm, yeah, that is a thing. And, and it just depends on how much I want to give energy to that thing or, or ignore that thing or forgive myself for that thing. This is something I've talked about before is my inherent ability and desire to learn. That's really what it is at the core. I want to learn new things all the time. I want to experience new things. Now, this is not a surprise to anyone who has ADHD or anyone that's ever heard about ADHD. The ooh shiny or ooh squirrel, thunder? ooh thunder. Thunder, just like big crack just now. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. You're going to get washed away. Goodbye.
See? A voyage. Uh, fantastic. So, Yarn, um, I get to be a pirate on it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> So (laughs) the thing where Ooh Shiny, Ooh Squirrel gets people with ADHD in trouble is when you are actually able to wrap the concept of work around it. You can case. Is that right? Case? Um, Like like the sausage casing? Yes, just like sausage cakes. In case. <laughs> Basically, the thing is that I love learning. I love new things. I love software. I love technical difficulty. I spend time doing it. I brag about watching YouTube videos, not about Taylor Swift. No, there's nothing wrong about that, but I watch YouTube videos on project management systems and database applications. That's what I do for fun. And I take that knowledge and I say, well, this is going to apply to my work Mm -hmm. or this is going to apply to my game world building Mm -hmm. or this is going to apply to anything in my life. Okay. And my aha moment recently was that that can often be misguided Mm. in my world. It's just what I want. It's what I want to do. It's what I like doing. I love doing that. It makes work fun for me to think about new things and to come up with new things. And and it's also a way that I find a community, right? I I love this app called Tana. It's incredibly complicated. I'm part of their Slack channel. I have new friends that have ADHD and use Tana. You have Yeah, and I've totally forgotten all of my old friends. Friends, no new friends, Matt. That's the <laughs> agreement here. No. New no. friends. So there are many benefits to this over tweaking, this futzing, this learning, this impetus, this limitless quest for knowledge nerdery. But the problems are that it can take time away from the things I really want to do, period. That's the bad news that I have to share with everybody today. That if you are similar to me, which you are blessed, AK, because this does not seem to be an issue for you at all. And I'm so envious. If there's one thing I could change about my brain, it would be to have a little bit of that. My brother also has no need. He can futz and tweak on lots of other things, mm-hmm. but but not in this way. So the story is that I was tasked to build a project management system for our team. And it has been half a year or more. And I still have not delivered that because I have rebuilt a Notion project management system at least five times mm-hmm. in the last six months. Yep. And that's just, that becomes a problem. You know, it's not like I do it all day, every day. Right. And it's not like work doesn't get done. It's really, the issue with it really is that I have a whiteboard here of the things that I really want to get mm-hmm. done, which is be a better game master, put out more videos about, tabletop role-playing games that I love. Make videos about software <laughs> concerning tabletop role-playing. But if I don't, if, if I'm just futzing with Notion, mm-hmm. it's, it's me just wasting time. Yeah. It's just wasting time. So I had this moment and I just said, oh my gosh, this is such a problem in my life. And... I just decided to get serious about it and get real about it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we were talking about today is just that feeling, whether you have any of this, Allison, and also, of course, how that has applied to my being a game master and the tools that I use, because recently you have introduced me to arguably the most simple 
virtual tabletop, ah. Albert Rodeo. Mm -hmm. And we used Foundry yesterday, and I was like, damn, I wish this was Albert because I mm -hmm. am clicking and cooking and clicking and setting up all this beautiful stuff. And it does, it's not making it better yeah. for, for anyone. Yeah. It's just not making any, it's not making it better. Yep. And I want to do the things. I mean, look, I've overcome a lot of this yeah. in the last two years since doing this podcast. Like I've overcome a lot of this need, but it's still there and yeah. it's, it's probably going to be something I have to fight. So, what do you think, Allison? Um, I'll I'll talk in my nice soothing voice for a moment. Okay, thank you. Welcome to therapy, Matt. <laughs> I'm proud of you. These are big, important <laughs> steps you're taking. Um, I don't say that. I mean, I'm I'm talking in jest, but it, I I almost feel like I, I should have walked in here to like a a banner, you know, like this is an intervention. Yeah. Um. But yeah. but a self imposed intervention. To be very clear, mm -hmm. I, I a, yeah. I, I I was as I was thinking about this episode before we hit record, you know, there was a, there was an episode last season where Matt basically felt like I called him to the principal's office to have a word, <laughs> please, Mr. Bivens. And I feel like Matt has called himself to the principal's office. I have, um, I have actually done, I've, I've called myself to the, to the principal's office. And, he, and even though this is a topic that we have talked about one-on-one -on -one with our team, with this community over and over again, there still is something new about this discussion to me today. And and yeah. that is because you have said many times now that, that my lack of desire to futz is something that you envy. Mm -hmm. So I'm almost wondering if maybe the thing to do here, um, the thing that we're solving for is like how to pull us both closer to the middle mm -hmm. because I am so staunchly opposed to you that I don't even start. And that's also a big problem in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that, that my inability to begin and my utter just panic and shutdown. Yeah. During stasis, when I see a blank page <laughs> is just as deeply problematic as I'm going to futz and futz and futz and futz forever. Sure. Cause, because at the end of the day, neither like the problem is we don't know what done looks like. We don't know what yeah. done looks like. We don't know what done looks like. We don't know what done looks like. So if I yeah. never start it, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and I never finish and you it. never finish it either way, we never get to check the box. Um, yep. And that's, that's problematic for ourselves as people, for ourselves as teammates and for everybody that has to work with us, yeah. <laughs> our, our, our team and our clients alike. Yes. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. So, and, and I've had a lot of conversations to that tune of like, why do these like seemingly small things just like shut you down, you know, yeah. and you just can't take, and then I can, but I can do like other big things, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a problem. I guess what we're going to, we're going to try and solve for it. Um, okay. So, you know, I, I began that, that little diatribe there in jest, but like, I am proud of you. It is a big step that we do need to like continue to go to therapy about these things. Yeah. Um, and so even though that was a little like, you know, flippant approach to it, I, I mean it too. Um, and I am, I am going to coaching and yeah, therapy about are. this. Yeah. And it is, it is, uh, you know, my, my, my coach who we, who we've all met, mm -hmm. Brittany, she's a, she's a gear nut, a tool mm -hmm. nut too. And, so when we talk about it, she understands it. Yeah. Um, and but but her job is to try to just minimize it. And I think I think a part of it too, AK, is that it has been so long. Is that thunder? Mm -hmm. Can you hear, hear that? that? Yeah. Uh, it's like shaking my house right now. Wow. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So if I if you lose me, it, I yeah. I lost power. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'll never lose you, hopefully. Oh, never. But, <laughs> I'll never let go back. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. Thanks in part to Brittany's help, I now have things that I genuinely care about a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've narrowed them down to just a couple of buckets. Just a few buckets. Yeah. And... 
Wow, it's so loud. And uh, Shh, I'm recording a podcast. Sh- for God's sake, God, yeah. come on, man. rude, so rude. So uh, you know, the the problem with me doing this now is that mm-hmm. when I have been working on things I did not actually enjoy, yeah. it was a s- escape. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's better. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying at least my brain was working. At least I was doing stuff. I mean, if somebody walked in off the street and said, hey, buddy, mm-hmm. I need a Notion template for project management. Yeah. By end of day today. I, I got that. I can do that. That's wonderful. A lot of people can't do that. So that's great. But it's not helping my situation. And now, now that I care way more about things in my life. I want to move forward way more than notion Then I need to stop doing things like that or at least be curtailed or at least be handheld. Yeah. <laughs> Have someone hold my hand to stop me mm-hmm. or just check it before I wreck it. Check it before you wreck it. And it's interesting because as you were trying your damnedest over the past Honestly, longer than six months because you started know, this last year. It's a God but all all you were ever doing was trying to give everybody everything we ever wanted. That's all. A simple request. <laughs> like just just make four people with four very different brains, plus yeah. future proof it for anybody else who's going to need to put their hands in on and around it. Perfect, right. Matt. That's all. Why are yeah. you being dramatic here? Um, yeah. But to that extent, to that end, that's why I love a template. That's why I always Mm -hmm. wanted a dashboard because in my brain, when I come to a screen and go, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know where to go. And then I get, you know, "Ah," about it. And so that was what I was always asking for. So you were trying to, you know, and that's where Evan and I both kept saying, like, isn't there just like a template of this we can use? Like, why does it have to be built from scratch? Yeah, you know, and, but, and things like that. So right, and and every single person I've talked to about this says that mentions that. The the thing, my response is, I heard you, and I went back once again to the drawing board, and I pulled out pure Notion templates, not even third party, just pure mm-hmm. Notion branded templates. Uh, we're talking about Notion here. If no one knows what Notion is, uh. Just look it up. Sorry, we don't have time for that. I'm sorry. You have like eight but, episodes out on it already. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, forget <laughs> about it. But, but it, you know, it, it, it could be Notion. It could be Tana. It yeah. could be ClickUp. It could be literally any – it could be it could be Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Right. It could, you know, interchangeable as far as, as far as what we're actually talking about. Well, and the bigger question is how do four people with very different brains work together effectively and deliver things – in a client facing world. That's ultimately right. the thing that we're solving for here. Yes. And that, that is tough. That, that is, is tough. tough. But, but the, the response that I would give to people when they said, Hey, can't you just use templates? I went out and I got these templates and I, and I, I put them together, but yes, like you say, we've got content creation. Mm-hmm. We've got, we've got things that heavily involve a calendar. Mm-hmm. We've got tasks. We've got, We've got a client project and then we've got a not client project. Mm-hmm. And how do they all fit together? But but the even bigger problem for me was even if I had the actual ability to just hook together a few Notion templates, call it a day, my love of watching people like Thomas Frank or this German fella named Matthias Frank – <laughs> They're all named Frank, Big I guess. Last name, I no, guess. I'm kidding. I know. <laughs> or or Ali Abdal, or these yeah. these people who are like putting out productivity. It is porn. It, I, I'm not yeah. the first person to say that. It is yeah. porn, and they've come up with beautiful, yeah. genius ways of using this stuff. Notion itself, next mm-hmm. week or a month mm-hmm. later or the month after, is going to come up with a mind blowing new feature okay. that will fix dozens of little things that that bug me. And it, and it's always about that, isn't it? It's yep. always about this, this, you get to a point mm-hmm. and you're given all of these tools, but then you hit a little snag and it's just the snag that, that is, it just, it just drives me insane. That is ADHD as well, right? That is the, 
that is it, that is the the inability f- for me to use an an app that is not aesthetically pleasing mm-hmm. to look at or has a terrible user experience mm-hmm. i can't do it i won't i won't choose it i won't yeah. do it it's just how my brain works and so i'll hit a snag and try to work and hack that snag this applies to everything in my work life and it definitely applies to dungeons and dragons mm-hmm. and it definitely applies to ways that we play dungeons and dragons yeah. and other games right yep. i do it all the freaking time yeah and so i have two choices i can beat myself up which i'm not going to do because we're not doing that no more not. we're not doing that we you're not doing people who are listening right now you're not going to do that no more We've starting today, taking that away but from you. <laughs> no, it's ours no, we, we've, we've done a lot better about beating ourselves up. And so that's wonderful. But I could either do that or I can just say, look, let's keep the eye on the prize. Yes. How can I make things easier? How can I get what I want? Yes. And just learn to be okay with simpler things, simpler tools. I'm not saying I'm there yet, but I... It's it's just on my mind so much these days, and I just would love to be on a journey. I looked up on the internet. What was my search? Why Notion? And again, I'm not picking on Notion. Notion is incredible. Mm-hmm. It is truly miraculous. I have loved Notion since the year it came out, literally. But for my brain, is very hard. Why Notion is bad for ADHD. Oh, 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 there's documentation on this. Uh, so much. Oh. There's so much. Oh. And, and I, I will say this. Uh, it, is, it is somewhat mixed. Okay. But the general, I would say the first page, page of Google results, there's one, two, three, four five, six, seven out of the, what, 10 in the list that are negative. But then there's some people who are like, I use Notion to improve ADHD. So I'm not saying that isn't isn't impossible, but I I want to find that place where I can have fun, but also get, get the job done and not fall into little holes. And so questioning our whys of things, I love, love, love that you kind of came into this with like, I have this master list. I have the things that matter most to me. Um, The one that you started out this episode talking about, like being a great dungeon master, being a great, you know, partner, um, our kind of shared success with our business and with pocket dimension, all of those things, right? Because when you can Mm -hmm. find the whys that can help you then, and motivation is something that obviously we struggle with, not necessarily having or lacking motivation, but correctly distributing it. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. that way we don't put all of our motivation in one bucket. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I have realized, you know, you called this affliction, it's an addiction. You know, that's why you called it, you know, organizational porn. And like, I I am the same way with like my addiction to social media. And it, mm-hmm. like, it's a cortisol response. It is like the way that I am just, just trying any thing to dump dopamine into my system yeah. to feel better, even though I know that it never makes me feel better. Scrolling yeah. on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook for hours doesn't make me feel more connected. If anything, I'm right. learning, it makes me feel less connected. So lately I've been trying to get to the root. Like, so when I am scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, what am I really needing? Am I needing to be entertained? Could I get that same feeling through a book? Could I get it through watching a movie? Am I needing to feel connected to somebody? Is there someone specific that I'm lacking that connection with? Could I just reach out to them directly? Uh, you know, like all of these different things. So I, it makes me yeah. wonder what like the underlying issue is here of this. It's not perfectionism. I know that it's, but, but the futzing, the tinkering, the like, you know, like what is the underlying issue? And if we can solve for that here and now, right now, today, let's, let's solve let's for it. Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's solve it. Let's right just now. figure out what it is. But, 
but that like, but I say that to say that like, I know I'm addicted to my phone. I know that I am yeah. constantly looking at my phone that I'm wondering yeah. when I'm going to get a text or when someone's going to post something so great that I'm going to be the first one to share it or that some news, something is going to drop and I'm going to see it. Like I, I know this about myself and I'm, I'm right. actively in a place right now where I am trying to kind of do what you're doing and lay down my arms, white flag up, mm -hmm. <laughs> surrender. Mm -hmm. Because social media does interest me. So it's just like this, you know, like, do I need to put like, a, you know, do I need to time timer myself there? I, I know mm -hmm. people who have recognized an addiction to social media who have timers on their phone. And so like yeah. iPhone, okay, you have now spent your hour a day on TikTok. You can spend no more. I have other yep. friends who have just, you know, uh, taken these apps off of their phones. So that way only like in front of, and I feel like I've been able to do that successfully in my life in other ways, but social media is just the one I keep coming back mm -hmm. to. So mm -hmm. like, it's tough. My name is Allison and I used to be a workaholic. Um, <laughs> I worked around the clock and was very cranky and very miserable. A lot of the time, it was not a happy place for me to be in. And it was not a happy place for any of my loved ones to be in with me. And so when I moved to exclusively working from home, I developed two core rules for myself that I have stuck by and that have served me incredibly, incredibly well. One, I have to put on different pajamas than the ones I woke up in. <laughs> I have daytime pajamas and nighttime pajamas now. Great. Right? Yes. I can't mm -hmm. go about my day in the thing that I woke up in. It's yeah. not healthy for me and it just leads me down a path of like unraveling. Two. I can only work in my office. I am so delighted that now, thanks to you, Matthew, I have a desktop. This baby, it's not going anywhere. And I can yeah. only work in here because I was at a point where my laptop just came everywhere with me and all over every surface. And it was never productive work. It was never, right. it was never good work. And I was, as a result of me, like forcing myself to feel better by working hard. Look how productive yeah. air quote I am. Yeah. I wasn't being productive, mm. but I had that illusion of I'm getting stuff done because I'm always plugged in. Right. And so once I like shattered that and said, no, your working hours are relatively eight to five, give or take. I'm a freelancer. Sometimes it takes more than that. Sometimes it takes less. I get up in the morning and I come into my office. I do my work here and then I leave this room I mean, that's even why I got rid of the bed that used to be back yeah. here because that was my guest bed. And I was like, no, this is officially like a dedicated space. It is only right. for working and creating content. Um, I'm not going to share its energy with people who sleep here. Mm -hmm. um, not to say like, okay, well, I figured everything out, like journey done. <laughs> but like, but I, I am speaking from a position of experience with this, that when I put those two rules into place for my work life, it made everything better because I was dealing with it from a very holistic way. So it made yeah. my work life better. It made my personal life better. And those two things. So that's what I'm wondering here is like, and, and you came to, to me and, you know, kind of initially telling me about this and saying like, we have to figure out a system where I, I am locked down where I I'm locked yeah. out of futzing where, yeah. and that's what we started to talk through is like, okay. Cause right now the, the, you guys have been listening to us talk about notion for so long now. And right now we're <laughs> at a decision point. Do we stay yeah. with notion? And the past uh -huh. eight plus months of work that Matt has poured into it, along with Fitz and along with a, in a little bit, me and Evan, like trying to get our bearings in there. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was where earlier Matt and I were talking. I was like, don't let's not baby with the bathwater this situation. Like there's good stuff yeah. in there, but I understand there, it will always be the desire, you know, to, to keep futzing or do we just go with something so dumbed down yeah. that like we can't hack it. We can't, we can't, we, we cannot, but that because of its lack of basic functionalities in the year of our Lord, 2024, you know, is going to make our life harder. Like there's already been right. gnashing of teeth and stomping of feet in the last week of using it, which is a yes, problem. We, yeah. We're not going to mention the app, but it we is won't. shocking. We, shocking. There we literal teeth gnashing, like yeah. actual tantrums. Yeah. Um, but it's glorious in its in unhackability. Right. It's glorious. And uh, that's why I s sought it out. So, uh, so yeah, so decision point that we'll make as a team, but then like, 
I guess this is your homework, Matt, is that like, Mm -hmm. what are the like two rules that we can put on you to help you feel empowered to take this power back? Because that's what this is. At the end of the day, this is feeling like a losing of grip, a losing of control. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to futz, I'm going to futz, I'm going to futz. But you're also saying, I recognize that that's not healthy. So you're saying I like, I want the change, right? Right, right, right. And Okay, so so there's a couple of things. I, I don't have the full answers to these. I know right. that we don't actually. We're not gonna we're not gonna solve this. Today. I, we, I, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you were joking, but but f- food for thought, I've got a couple of things because I have been working with Brittany about it. One thing that we're trying, which seems to be kind of working really well, is that I have a whiteboard mm-hmm. in my office. This whiteboard every week, every 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 check-in that I have with Brittany, we go over four buckets, four buckets right now. And and we've broken them down into roles. Okay. Uh, and so I've got, I've got media producer. I've got digital strategist. I've got captioner. And then because we know that it's a thing in my life and we don't want to punish me, I have optimizer all right so we're putting a positive spin on it yeah sometimes i look at that word and i and i just see tweaker <laughs> but he's tweaking but out on man. good days uh-huh. he's tweaking out, tweaking. <laughs> I'm ah. it. uh so sometimes i look, look at it and, and i see tweaker but but on good days i think optimizer and basically every week I've, i'm allowed like three things for each bucket an optimizer, only one, only one, yes. one thing. It has to be very specific and I have to get it done in the, the same way that I have to get all those other things done. And it doesn't, this doesn't live, this doesn't live in task management world or project mm-hmm. management world. It doesn't, it, I don't share it with y'all, mm-hmm. but it, it, I take it from work tasks and projects. I take it from captioning mm-hmm. things. I take it from D and D stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, World Builder is in there as well, but she just kind of knows that I'm going to be able to hand, handle that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes World Builder is also a part of media producer. Yeah, now, yeah, absolutely. And hopefully more and more. So it, it, just trying to keep it simple and trying to do that. And then just the accountability. Yeah. So that's one way. That's one way I would suggest to everyone that possibly you if you're if you're going through the same thing, and I know that a lot of you are because I've had these conversations in our beautiful discord server uh the pocket dimension i've had these conversations so i would suggest that you really find a pal and you could meet once a week i mean first first hire Brittany yes. smith my my adhd coach number one number two if you can't just find a friend and say these are the things i'm going to do today yeah and you're going to get some of them done and you're going to fail and you're going to get distracted. But if you just put it in a place where you see it all the time, you'll at least see it and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are important. Mm -hmm. This is the no bullshit list. Mm -hmm. These are the important things. Mm -hmm. So this is not, what's a good example. So there is a captioner list, Mm -hmm. but currently there is not a Build a wireless system for theater X. Okay. That's not on there right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do want to do that. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do that. But it shouldn't be on there right now Mm -hmm. because I've got very specific things. Uh, Optimizer could be completely redo the office. Mm -hmm. But I shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I shouldn't I shouldn't have that on the list right now. There is no need. So that's the way it works, and we're trying it out, mm-hmm. and so far it feels good. And I know that seeing these things every day when I come into the office and seeing them just in my face, and because they change too, yeah. right? Like these are not like these are things I want to live by. These should be deleted next week, and and it just kind of makes me say, okay, yeah. Uh, in order to get these important things done, I gotta I move on stop. Things. McFutson. Stop McFutson. Start McLovin. <laughs> that could be on the list too. These are just ideas. You know, I mean, Lindsay and I are going to Mexico at the end of the year. I bet that 
Mexico will make this list so as if we get closer to that or I mean it could be anything it doesn't matter it's I see it it's vital these are vital things boom 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 I am trying to do the same in world building I'm trying to do the same in thinking about prepping for games trying to cut all the things that I know are just rabbit holes can I tell you the thing that you've said so far today that just fills me with utter glee, joy, and delight, and you're going to laugh at so hard? <laughs> I already know, but go ahead. What do you think it's going to be? That I am enjoying using Over Rodeo. Rodeo. That is exactly it. <laughs> that you gave it the edge. Man. I've given it the edge, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I've given it the edge. It also frustrates me sometimes, but it does enough. Yes. Like, it, can you handle Foundry VTT? And what I mean by that is there is no question that Foundry v VTT can do every single right. thing that you want for a virtual game. Right. There is no question. It is gorgeous software. It's incomparable. It's just the top, tippity top of the thing. So if, if you've got that ability and you've got a little bit of of nerd skills and you're not afraid to kind of really deep dive in there yeah. uh, like I have in the past, you can't beat it. But if you want to get down to the what is the story, who are you playing with, how much fun can I have without juggling tools? And the reason I used Foundry yesterday is because someone has someone did all of the hard work for me. Right. They put it together in Foundry. And that's that's nice. And I I do like that. I I love them all. I right. love Encounter Plus. And Counter Plus for me uh, was sort of my nerdy version of Albert Rodeo. Mm -hmm. But even that sometimes gets to be too futzy. Yeah. There's just too, there's too many good people making it better yeah. sometimes. I'll share, because I, and I love how this is coming together. I love how the, like, the, the, the personal knowledge manager database is coming into a fold with the VTT talk. That is ADHD 20 right there in a nutshell. Like right. there's so it many is. threads we can pull between so many of the things that are both the way we wired and we are wired and the things that we enjoy. And to kind of start to then close the loop on the question we asked at the beginning of this episode, which is like, what was your biggest aha moment? Mm -hmm. I think a aha moment that I had recently in my life that I instantly applied into my game master practice is questioning when my anxiety spikes, who told you that? And I think we've talked about mm. this before here where like in my head for the first year that I was a game master, I thought that I had to cram action into every second of any session. I thought that mm -hmm. I had to write four straight hours of a Steven Seagal movie. I don't know why I just chose <laughs> Steven Seagal. Felt good at the time. It's a weird choice now. Any hoozles. You know what I mean though? Like I thought I, I thought that was the expectation being put on my shoulders as a game master. And then yeah. I learned the question, who told you that? And I realized not one single person that I have ever played, and especially not one single person that I have ever DM'd for, has ever said, Allison, my expectation of you as a GM is it is your job and your job only to entertain me for four straight hours. Mm. And I realized that because I was planning for four straight hours, I was not giving myself or any of the players any room to explore. And that is why a lot of people play D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Because I'm not a futzer and I don't mm -hmm. enjoy high tech things nearly right. to the, I, I love it when they work. I love it when you can take me by the hand and show me easily. And then like, I feel and look cool. But when mm -hmm. I don't get it, my brain shuts down and I was yeah. spending, so, so okay, behind the DM screen, peek forward. I'm running a eighth level dagger heart one shot this weekend. Yeah. I haven't even started prepping for it. Oh, um, but I'm no longer worried because I now know because right. of tools like Owlbear Rodeo that just allow yeah. me to like just get to the point faster. It's not like I'm going to yes. import a couple of maps. I'm going to import a couple of tokens. And then the whole reason that I think I like Daggerheart so much, both as a player and as a GM, is yeah. because like the, it is the onus is as much on the players to create the world and inhabit it fully as it is on me to run it. So while I want yep. there to be very, you know, 
flavor text that draws you in and a really good hook and a really ferocious monster that you're going to have fun beating the shit out of. Like, I want all those things for you as a player, like stripping it down back to its brass tacks and just yeah. like letting other people help you build it. And I think that yeah. that is a little bit of a, uh, you know, metaphor to what you're going through with notion of like, yes, who told you it has to be perfect that it right. has to beat every other <laughs> project management. And and in your defense, we did tell you that we wanted all of these things. Yeah. <laughs> so now is the time to say, okay, but what's the Owlbear Rodeo version of Notion? Yes. That just gets us the map that we need because we are all professionals who have brains, who know how things work. Like, and, and so the fact that you have gotten that with Owlbear Rodeo and have, because I had to drag you. I won't say kicking and screaming into Owlbear Rodeo, but there is a little resistance. Well, also, it it grew up a lot. It did, yes. I, I, w I was aware of Owlbear right. from, from day one yep. as well, and it, it yeah. was not well, it's not what it even is now. fun for me. Yes. But it is very, very solid. It's frustrating that I can't do beautiful mm -hmm. uh, lighting effects when you token goes through yep. the hallways. Yeah. and But... I also don't have to sit there and add yeah. walls for f an hour. And that's <laughs> you know? exactly it. Like with Encounter yeah. Plus, I have now re I'm still spending honestly about the same amount of time prepping, realizing my players don't give a shit about things like fog of right. war. Right. I can just put a big gray box over it and then delete it when they need to walk into that right. room. Yep. The bells and whistles are cool when you can do them seamlessly. And if that's how you want to spend all your time, and if we can get to a point where we can crowdfund a life for ourselves, where we're paid millions a second just for breathing and building worlds, cool. Yeah. But in the meantime, I would much rather give my players a satisfying story and like fun NPCs. And I realized yes. what I was doing is when I was using you know, tools like, I've never touched Foundry. I probably never will. And again, until you no, hold my hand and walk me through it. <laughs> I don't think you should. No, I, yeah, yeah, know your yeah. limits, right? But like with Encounter Plus, I was spending so much time in the setup that I was writing these very thin stories and these very uninteresting mm -hmm. NPCs and baddies. And now I feel like I can write juicier things because I've just reallocated my time back. So I want you to write juicier things and reallocate your time. I will. And and you're you're right. It is all about priority. I will say one last thing for those listening going, yeah, but, 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 but I, I'm imagining that your butt is the same as mine. <laughs> nice. No, I'm kidding. Uh, like <laughs> the... <laughs> That was so weird. <laughs> I, I, I referenced Steven Seagal. So you're just getting on my weird level today. I'm getting on your saying. He does have a nice ass. He does. Does he? Uh, <laughs> So, yes, to what you just said, your players do not care about Fog of War. However, I do. Yes. I love, I love the lighting effects. I don't like the way Albert does it as no. much. I, I want it to look cooler. I played, I've played video games all my life. I yeah. want it to look like that. But here's the thing that I can suggest. Find a way, find a time, and definitely find the right application yeah for that and and in my you know in my case someday i would love to make videos on every single virtual tabletop yeah. out there i really do want to do that in my mind i'm now taking all of the things that i love to learn about i'm going to put them in a bucket and i'm going to say i'm going to have a series on this i'm going to yeah. talk about it could, and that is a much better use of my time as far as yeah. as far as that stuff goes. Because, yes, you get into this thing where like, but I want this. This is what is part of yeah. the fun for me. But look, what is the bigger fun? The yeah. bigger fun is the fun that I have with all of my friends. And you're right. My friends don't give a damn. What is your priority of fun? You have to like, yeah. with an ADHD brain, you have to qualify quantify it to that degree yes you have to say yes yeah fun but you're still gonna have fun just playing with your friends matt so and you, uh, you can eat apples and cake and have them too yeah but choose your battle and choose exactly your, yeah. and that's like mm -hmm. i am not like yes i absolutely agree that the merit of fog of war and a really cool interactive vtt 
so cool. There's no part of me that's trying to rain on that parade. And if we were playing in one game and this was just like your like side project and you were just over here on the side tinkering and making it great. And that's the thing that you did fine. But the truth of the mm -hmm. matter is we're running a full-time business. Yep. We have all of the pocket dimension things going on. We are now, you know, you are now running a campaign for us as friends. You're running a campaign for Pocket Dimension. I'm running monthly one shots. You're also running monthly one shots. Like at some point we have to prioritize. Right. And that's all that this conversation is about. It is not. Yeah. Please, gremlins of the Internet, do not walk away from this episode being like, well, Allison says anybody who spends any time <laughs> tinkering on any BTT sucks. Yeah. Yeah. If that sound bite gets out that I've been taken grossly out of context, that's not right. what I mean. And yes, I understand and appreciate the fact that you enjoy it as much as you do. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, like when, t when we don't have time to do everything we want, we just have to get better at saying, okay, so what's the most important what's use the most of my fun? time right now? And I would rather give yeah. a satisfying one shot than have a super satisfying VTT personally. And if yeah. you disagree with that and would rather have a great VTT, that is your prerogative. And I will not talk you out. Of exactly. <laughs> exactly. Perfectly said. Perfectly <laughs> said. Uh, I feel like we could also on a meta level apply this to this very podcast mm -hmm. as we have not adhered to a schedule that we have in, in previous years. Yeah. And I'm not going to make us feel bad about it, but I will say this, that uh, I'm very happy with the work that we've done yeah. this year, season three. This podcast is, is important to me. Mm -hmm. These these talks are important to me. It's important to me that we have them on a microphone yeah. for some reason. Yeah. So yeah. I, I say, while we haven't fixed the issue, par for the course, ADHD 20, uh, I would like to also say... Yes. And let's let's make sure that that we in our many, 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 many things that we have to do now with the pocket dimension, remember that that this is easy and this is fun. I agree. And this is this is this is important to us. So. Worth prioritizing, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Prioritizing. It'll never get easier. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I won't say that it's easy for me now. I will say that I am more skilled at it than I've ever been before. I can, you can learn skills. You can learn yeah. it. Like I, I can look back on times where I just was all over the place. And I have realized in recent years that when you do that, when you have 18 projects that you try and start and work on all at once, the the progression is very, very slow. It's it's everything to tie it again back to D&D. To &D. It's what I mm -hmm. realized with my chimerical build. When I multi-class, I was going half mm. as fast in my progression of levels as the rest of my party. Mm. So I constantly felt behind them. I was like, wow, they're really yep. skilled. And I'm, even though I was at the same level of them, I was only half good at two things. I also think that one of the aha moments that we have been speaking about this episode for me has been, I will get more skilled. I will develop more tools, but unfortunately that is broken in me. The prioritization, it's truly broken. It doesn't work. And I think that if I remember that, Mm -hmm. And I and I call upon my friends for help. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I and I continue to make this podcast so that I have things to talk about so that I am aware of these yeah. moments. But it doesn't mean that I can't get better. That's the difference. It's not going to get better. Yes. I will get better. And right. what you just said then sparked something else in me. We're just going to do this for like the next two hours. Okay. It's be the longest episode ever. It was like, yes, and to each other. <laughs> Everything that the other one says is like, yeah, uh -huh, let, me, let me pile on to that. In your defense, yes, there are like hard and soft skills that like are never going to sit well in our brain. Just same with me. You probably could sit with me for hours a day and teach me how to code, you know, but like it would be right. a long and but nobody's asking me to. Right. You're asking me to do the things that I'm good at while I'm asking you to do the things that you're good at. Yeah. You are our warlock. You are our artificer. Mm -hmm. And in, like, so then stop trying to be <laughs> the wizard, the bard, the fighter, the barbarian, right. you know, like, and, yes. and same thing for me, like, like getting into our classes, getting into our lanes, knowing our roles and then knowing like, okay, so I, I'm doing warlock and artificer things. Mm -hmm. That other thing over there, that really feels like a sorcerer. I need some yep. wild magic in order to feel that I'm going to call my sorcerer in. 
Yeah. So that's why even with the mm-hmm. one shots, when I kick them off, everybody's always interested in what everybody else is playing. Because yes, yeah. a party full of bards or a party full of barbarians or druids can be funny and sticky, but like for the most part, in most even one shots, you want, you know, the hand to hand combat specialists and the range specialists and the healers, and that's all any of us are being called to do. That's it. We fixed everything. That is it. Yep. I think that's it. So let's do it. Yay, and let's do this more often. Yeah. A couple nerds turned on some mics, talked about their problems, some... and discovered that a lot of other people had the exact same problems. And I still have more problems, we so still have more. don't you worry. We've got <laughs> seasons and seasons worth of problems <laughs> to dump on you guys, and that is the ADHD 20 promise. We're going to keep repeating things, but as we've already mentioned, we're not going to remember, and y'all are not going to remember. It's going to be really funny when we're old and have ADHD. Like, if it's our <laughs> as we oh, no. sink into senility, it's it's oh, it's no. going to be a wild. Buckle up, everybody. Yeah, seriously, that is a y'all real thing. Y'all think that I repeat myself now? Just wait till 84-year-old Allison's in the house. <laughs> Oh, man, I can't wait to know 84-year-old Alice. I know, she's going to be great. I can't wait to know 84 and 94-year-old Matt. I can't exactly <laughs> 94-year-old Matt. He's going to be great. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh He's going to be like lord of the dinner table, just holding court every night. It's going to be fantastic. Damn, yeah. that's probably true. I love it. Bye-bye. ADHD 20 is a creation from The Pocket Dimension, a multiverse where we explore neurospies, rolling dice, and so much more. Come chat with us in our Discord server, open to all. The join link is in our show notes. Ready to level up your support? Check out The Pocket Dimension's Patreon, where you can get access to bonus content, be the first to hear new episodes, and even play TTRPGs with us and our friends. The best way you can help us, though, is just to share the gift of ADHD 20 with the people that you think will like it. We love that you're here. Thank you for entering The Pocket Dimension.